Well, while sipping my coffee, something popped into my head, and uh, like if, like all of my previous uh, videos, uh, I just I just thought to dish out something. Uh, in this case or in this specific video, I'll take a quick peek on something called initRD or initRAMFS. This specific uh, image file is basically assist you to help in two-phase boot. What, what does two-phase boot means? Initially, the, the disks, the underlying storage might not get mounted. So, this file is a RAM, this file is a uh, image file which resides on RAM, which is a replica of the actual root file system, clubbed with all the, all the libraries and binaries. So it initially helped Linux to boot the system, get on with the boot, until the actual root file system get loaded okay so best and this image file is very short-lived because it is whole and sole purpose you to provide the linux booting mechanism to uh, uh to provide a root file system image where all the modules and binaries are exist so it can take advantage of it once the once the actual root file system get mounted later stage in the boot so this ram disk or init rd file or in init ram fs file get removed or unmount okay this is the simplest possible explanation it basically assists the and there are several other cases uh, where you can use init ram fs or init rd uh, few of them uh, few of them are so you if you want to do some specialized uh, mechanism to be part of your boot process you can create a, a custom init rd or init ramfs file to 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 boot the system say you are sitting on a specific hardware where you want some specific driver to be loaded or uh, some other mechanism you might want to see during the boot okay so you can put those stuff in the init ramfs so it can help during the boot okay so um, it used in many years back many many years back so we used to have uh, that kind of stuff in a floppy to boot the server initially. Uh, I had a fond memories about that because I used to work in a data center, I have an IT giant, and one of my job was like that, to boot the server with the init RD or init RAMFS system in, the, in a floppy. It sound darken, but it almost two decades back. Uh, so, the purpose of it to, to provide you to in a, in, a, in a crux without clobbered up your head init rd or init ff system is meant for uh, assist linux booting okay so with that commentary or explanation of it uh, let me let me show you some demonstration okay so i have spawned up a terminal let me get into it and i believe i have zoomed enough so people can see now i have a few um, init rd or init ramfs image already have in under boot okay so i'm going to take uh, what as you can see i have two init ramfs or init rd whatever you call the the image file already there i'm going to take uh, use one of them to to show you how you can see what the init ramfs file contains and how you could do how you could disassemble 
that means extract the this is essentially it's a image file okay in a in a in a in a in a, in a zipped format or zip format or exact format okay it's a compressed file image file how to disassemble that and again if you want to put something inside that file of your choice say for a driver or something like that then you need to rebuild that in your trimfs image to to get that things going in a putting mechanism okay so let me start with that let me um, mkd is a abbreviated alias version to create a directory and get into that directory nothing else two step at once create a directory and get into a directory um custom initially i'm i create creating this uh, i'm creating this directory the name should be what we are supposed to do we are supposed to create a custom uh initially system okay so all i have to do i'm inside that uh, newly created directory and if you are wondering alias grape uh, mkd oh it's a okay it's a function so let's see this is a this is a simple one line function uh, to 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 the to the to the stuff i called that is mkd create a directory and get into it this is what it looks like it is in my bash initialization file so if i run mkd it will and give it a parameter it will create a directory and get into it as simple as that okay so now i want to um, this it's a basically cpio archive okay the init init ramfs or init id system what is cpio let me give you uh, let me show you the man page why it takes so long so copy file to and from archive okay that's what it is meant cpio archive okay and it has got few flag which i'll show you um in a moment while creating and unzipping okay so so the first thing first uh, i'm inside a newly created uh, directory where i need to find out what sort of mechanism uh, i use while creating the init initary file it's a uh, the initary file creation is a part of uh, part of the uh, linux kernel update system few of the distribution they do it themselves and the distribution which it doesn't do uh, i do it manually in through my script it's pretty darn simple uh, something called dracut dracut is a is a is a is a binary is a package which consists of other binary uh, so you should have it okay let me show you dracut is a binary uh, a low level initary initram first generation tool which i use okay and a lot of other other distribution also use there you should look into the man page of dracut to know how you could build uh, initary and initram fs system which i'm not going to delve into it right at this moment let me show you that um, i need to find out mm, this is my um built in ramfs so i want to find it out so okay uh, so it's basically saying it's a zip compressed file right as you can see here written okay so uh so we need to so first of all before 
doing the disassemble or extracting the init uh, ramfs file to show you what it contains let me show you how it what there is a binary called ls init rd which comes bundled with the track if you install dracut package whatever the linux distribution you are sitting on doesn't matter dracut is available from your main os repository so once you installed it the ls init rd uh, which will help you to see what are the uh, stuff in your init rd system contain image file contain it consists of modules binaries and all this stuff which require for a for booting the Linux kernel system initially. Okay, so ls init rd. Okay, then pass the init ramfs system. Okay, if I run this, see, this is going to show you, this is going to show you what the uh, it ran off let me scroll up so you can see what it contains okay so init rd or init uh, ram fs system is basically a replica of a root file system okay so it consists of all the binaries and the modules and whatever is required to boot your system in a image ram image file which basically exist ram during the existing ram during the boot to assist booting okay until the real root file system get mounted which is which which will happen later in the booting stage of linux okay so this is how it it looks and you can pass as you can see i have passed host only that means this init rd image will specifically tailored for the system where i am sitting okay instead of creating a generic init rd or init ramfs system which people or distribution generally do you can pass host only stuff so it can build the init ramfs or init rd system uh, wherever you are sitting on 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 specific machine okay so you can see with the command ls init rd man ls init rd this is the binary you can use tool to show the content of the init ramfs image see i have highlighted it the purpose of it this binary comes along with a dracut package which you can install wherever you are sitting on whatever the linux distribution you are sitting on doesn't matter you can get it from your main repo okay so that's what i ran ls init rd to see what the content of the init rd init ramfs image file okay all right now so i want to disassemble the the existing init rd or init ramfs file to show you what it contains okay so we we need to find as we have already found out that the init rd file is a cpio that means it's an archived is compressed file so we need to inflate it with with some tool and we have discovered that this is it is a zzipped file i'm running it again for you so you 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 can see okay in it ram a face uh, it always so this is a zzip file as you can see okay i'm doing it second time <laughs> so okay so now how do i do that so 
as we know so what we'll do because it's a reset so let me for instance uh, why not uh, get it done normally boot uh, in it ramfs and then copy it to here and now simply I'm doing it for my sake okay so now this things goes I just copied it to my home directory from boot directory and changed the ownership to me instead of root okay so it get easier so we we are supposed to uncompressed it right and see the content okay so I'm clearing the screen so we have found out it is a, a zzipped file d2 disassembled okay and uh, we need to give the file name okay and piping it to cpio idmp this flag i'll show you each and every flag what it does okay so i use cpio binary which is a compressed mechanism okay archived format with flag idmp okay so i'm decompressing the init ramfs file to see the content of it What's going on? Um, why it is saying unknown suffix? And uh, I don't know why, why it is saying like that. Okay, I made a mistake. I should have fed it because I ran it before okay I'm piping it to IDMP now it's inflating okay so it has inflated see you can you can see that uh, this is a replica of the existing when when the init ramfs system created uh, it is it is the replica of the root file system which is required for putting the linux file linux OS initially okay now for instance uh, if you if you wanted to if you wanted to uh, rebuild the init rd system or init ram fs with some addition i'm going to add um, uh, rudimentary stuff here i'm getting it from so i'm getting a, a arbitrary file to add to this but uh, to this uh, to this directory to repeat for rebuilding the init or your ramfs system okay you could add a module or something which will enhance the booting mechanism i'm using this particular file just just for the sake of demonstration that you could add files to the to the deflated init or init ramfs system and then rebuild it 
okay so I have added to this file here and if I wanted to build it say for instance I have to what I have to do I have to run find uh, I hope you are seeing it right I have to run find then all the files I need it then I have to throw out all the not required stuff then I have to do cpio hyphen c hyphen o then uh, the format is equal to xz then I have to and uh, again I forgot the command which uh, So this is the command I'm going to run uh, because I ran it before. So I take it from my from my existing command. Okay. So basically, it will it will find all the commands, then throw it away the necessary stuff to null. Then CPIO is archiving mechanism. I'll show you what the C and O does. Is basically create the archive and x 9 is the zipping format compressing format as you can see x and I'm going to store it in a new location of the file of the new initary image okay which is consisting of the new file I have added to it all right so if I do It takes some time to build the initial image. So the purpose of this building is to because I have added this. I just added a plain file. You could add it a, a module, add it some mechanism, some cell script, whatever you like for to to have in your in your in your booting mechanism okay so it has created if I do temp uh, new init RDC it has created right now okay now if I do ls init RD, temp uh, new init RD, if I do see it show me like that okay now it shows you what it contain almost all the stuff which which was there right but I added a file to to show you that ls uh, init rd okay and then temp new init rd then if I grab because I know the file I have injected I'm again saying you could grab through the initary output to find out what you have added to your initary system okay if I do and it will certainly find it out see it is there okay so you can you can you can add this so you can disassemble the existing initary init ramfs file inject of your required stuff in the disassembled location like module shell script whatever you like to have 
to get worked on during the booting phase okay then you rebuild the initary uh, image or init ramfs image to to boot with it okay few of the distribution every time you build rebuild or upgrade the kernel it will it will it will uh, update the initary system too like if you are sitting on debian or ubuntu or whatever it it does the same thing automatically for for you every single time you update the or upgrade the kernel right so this is a manual process of doing initary or init ramfs system by hand simplest possible way it could get really complicated if you want to that means uh, you can do whatever you like to do during the initial push phase with it it's essentially a ram image file which resides on ram help linux to boot okay until the actual or real root file system get mounted okay so the whole and sole purpose of this initary or init ramfs system is to assist linux to boot initial phase i don't think it is beyond that and it is created for specific reason as i mentioned very beginning in the video i'm reiterating again if you're sitting on a special hardware which requires some special attention during the boot you could infuse the mechanism in the initary or init ramfs system so it can take place during the early stage of boot while that uh, while the initary or init ramfs file in the ram itself okay so i hope uh, you take a cue out of it and try to use it wisely but it will give you some sort of insight you can easily build the init ramfs system with the help of dracut please as i shown to you look into our install dracut if you don't have it already it should be available in your main os repository whatever the os you are sitting on doesn't matter then give some time to look through the man pages so you can understand how we could build a ramfs system during with the, with dracut that's the simplest possible way to build it okay and do whatever you like to do that's the that is the that is the ethos behind sitting on an open system okay so i hope this will be useful for some people thanks for watching